tonight we're trying to create a buzz about APT soccer. We're just kind of putting everything together to show off a little bit, showing people how hard it is to play with one leg and two crutches. So hopefully they get a good show at halftime. That's Alex Miller, the coach of the Colorado Rapids amputee soccer team, and this is Amputee Soccer Rising, a co-production of the American Amputee Soccer Association and Amplitude Magazine. This episode is brought to you by Proteor, improving the lives of individuals living with limb loss and limb difference for over 100 years. Find them at us.proteor.com. I'm your host, Larry Borowski, the editor of Amplitude. And although Alex Miller sounded pretty confident in that introduction you just heard, he might have been more nervous than he let on. He talked to us during the first half of a Major League Soccer match in Denver last month. Just before, Miller led about 15 amputee soccer players onto the field for a halftime scrimmage in front of about 12,000 hardcore soccer fans. Now, the MLS game between the Colorado Rapids and the Vancouver Whitecaps featured world-class players from all over the world. But many of Miller's players had only been playing amputee soccer for a few weeks. Some had just met each other that day. I mean, some of my guys haven't ever touched a soccer ball. They're just super eager to learn. So it can be anything from teaching them how to kick a ball to um, running with crutches because they're used to wearing their prosthesis most of the time. So we kind of started uh, from ground up, right, um, working on basic drills, basic fundamentals with a soccer ball and moving around a field with these crutches. The, the first step is getting everybody kind of in soccer shape, right, uh, moving around well and figuring out how to touch the ball. Okay, then. This would be equivalent to playing a basketball scrimmage in front of a bunch of rabid NBA fans when you barely know how to dribble a basketball. Who signs up for that and why? One player, Darian Elizondo, admitted to us that all he cared about was getting through the halftime scrimmage without face planting. At the other end of the spectrum, there was Steve Crawford. He'd only attended one soccer practice before the halftime scrimmage, but as the final minutes of the first half ticked off, here's how he was feeling. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to show people, get some more exposure and stuff to our sport. And uh, A lot of people don't know ex it exists, so it's a really cool opportunity tonight to be able to showcase our sport in front of a full stadium. Hopefully more people are just as stoked about it as all of us are. Steve Crawford's about as fearless as they come. But another player, Gabriel Gonzalez, shared a more cautious sense of excitement about the halftime scrimmage. Gonzalez, who played soccer in high school, didn't take up amputee soccer until this year, six years after losing his leg. I probably spent, I don't know, six years without kicking a ball. And then suddenly you're kicking it again, but you don't have a strike foot. So you're depending on your crutches for stability and mobility. And trying to get around all the other players is, is hard, but it's, it's definitely challenging. It's a challenge that I'm willing to take, and it's definitely fun. I've uh, never had the opportunity to actually play in a stadium like this, but, you know, it was always a goal of mine when I was actually playing soccer uh, during, in, during high school. I'm super excited that now, as an amputee, I'm going to be able to play down in the field. All of these players are textbook examples of amputee soccer at the grassroots. They're not out to compete for World Cups or Paralympic medals. They just want to do something that lets them stay physically active, enjoy camaraderie with other amputees, and have a great time playing the world's favorite game. One exception at the Denver scrimmage was Javon Booker, a member of the U.S. National Amputee Soccer Team. Booker's played in big stadiums in front of large crowds all over the world. He's been working for years to generate interest in amputee soccer, and he flew in from New York to participate in the halftime scrimmage in Denver. We've been doing halftime demonstrations all over the country for the last five years. And we've just really seen that doing these demonstrations and having opportunities for the community to come out, learn more about the sport, as well as to find more amputee soccer players. And also to know that there's a community that's here to back that journey for them and to create access and opportunity for them is just a really, it's a really emotional experience. Having the opportunity to see the sport grow into something that um, is creating access for an underserved population of people and us understanding how powerful sport can be, not only as therapy, but as community building and as an opportunity to get people up and moving. We recognize that and we're just, we're just grateful to see the, the beautiful game be such a universal language for so many. One of Booker's teammates on the U.S. national team, Nico Calabria, also flew out to Denver for the halftime scrimmage. 
He's been working to promote amputee soccer not only as a viable sport, but also as an entertainment product that provides real value to its sponsors and business partners. The way that we do these things is it doesn't matter who wins or loses. This is Harlem Globetrotters. That's the idea, just entertainment and introduction to the sport. When people watch amputee soccer live for the first time, they realize that it's a sport that has a high entertainment value and it's it's cool. It's fun to watch, it's fast paced, it's intense. And I think that, you know, th this is a business, right? Working with the MLS brands and franchises brings the sport to another, to a larger audience that starts to make it something that uh, people see as more legitimate. If we can get more people in the stands and we can start providing another option for entertainment, then, then everybody's winning. So let's review. These were the stakes as halftime approached. Hold the attention of a stadium full of Major League Soccer fans. Showcase amputee soccer so it's attractive for new players. Demonstrate the commercial potential of the sport. And do all this in Colorado which is a national adaptive sports hub and a key region for amputee soccer's growth. This entire mission was riding on the shoulders of Alex Miller's enthusiastic but painfully inexperienced players, some of whom were still learning to tell the top end from the bottom end of their forearm crutches. Alex Miller didn't sound nervous. The players didn't sound nervous. I was nervous. And what about the Colorado Rapids, the MLS team that was hosting the event? What did they have at stake, and what made it attractive for them to stage this exhibition? We'll get to that after we thank our sponsor for this episode, Prodior. For over 100 years, Prodior has been committed to being human first. Prodior is dedicated to improving the lives of individuals living with limb loss and limb differences. For more information, log on at us.prodior.com. That's us.proteor.com. The Colorado Rapids are one of the original teams in Major League Soccer, and they're owned by Kroenke Sports, an international conglomerate that has hoisted championship trophies during this decade in the NFL, the NBA, and the NHL. Kroenke also owns Arsenal FC, one of the most successful professional soccer franchises on the planet, so it's an impressive organization to have in Amputee Soccer's corner. And its commitment went way beyond a five-minute halftime scrimmage. The Rapids turned over a whole section of their stadium concourse to Coach Miller and his players, where they could interact with the crowd, answer questions about amputee soccer, demonstrate their skills, and invite fans, mostly non-disabled ones, to try one-legged soccer for themselves. Here's a bit of what that sounded like. Well, the Rapids have spent the better part of two years paving the way for an amputee soccer exhibition in their stadium. And one of the catalysts was a local teenager named Jordan Obernesser. He's a competitive high school soccer player and big-time Rapids fan who lost his leg to childhood cancer back in 2002. Obernesser was on the field for the halftime scrimmage last month. Here's how he got connected to the Rapids. I think it was October of 2022, a month before my surgery, uh, before I, let, I had my leg amputated. And then a couple of Rapids players came to my house. They're Keegan Rosenberry and Diego Rubio. And so yeah, they came to my house, we were kicking the ball around, and then um, they've been following me through my whole journey. I don't really remember what I was thinking when I realized that, that I was going to lose my leg, but I think after I lost my leg, I knew I was going to play soccer again. I just didn't know how. There's this award every year that is hosted by FIFA called the Puskas Award. And an amputee actually won the Puskas Award. I was like blown away and I was so inspired by that. And I just, yeah, started to play on my own. And then recently I heard about the Rapids having their own amputee team. So it makes me so happy to play with them. I've played soccer my whole life, so I love the sport. And so, yeah, playing amputee soccer just fills my cup. At about the same time, Jordan Obernesser had his amputation surgery in the fall of 2022. The Amputee Football World Cup was taking place over in Turkey. Team USA made some headlines before the tournament by staging a high-profile exhibition match in Times Square and getting some coverage on ESPN. During the World Cup itself, Team USA advanced to the knockout stage, beating Indonesia and high-powered England along the way. All this made an impression on Tegan Maleka, the Rapids Community Relations Coordinator. I just thought it was a super cool and awesome thing, and I wanted to definitely jump on that. We are really dedicated to championing any aspect of the sport. So 
bringing in the amputee team really was just a very natural tie to that. At the start of 2023, we knew we wanted to make a Colorado Rapids amputee team. This year, it gained a lot more traction. A lot more people got involved through um, Jordan Obernesser, Alex Miller, and all of those guys. I think our ultimate goal is to get a team with a full roster, and then we can go participate in matches against the other MLS clubs. I saw just last night that the Reds played Metro New York in a soccer stadium, and the Rapids want to be right there competing in that space. Now, the Revs, also known as the New England Revolution, and New York Metro are two other amputee soccer teams that have permanent arrangements with MLS clubs. And they provided a blueprint for successful partnerships between professional MLS clubs and community-based amputee soccer organizations. The Denver community has drawn on that model, but it doesn't happen overnight. It took Miller many months of recruiting before he rounded up enough players for a full scrimmage. And he couldn't have done it without the ongoing behind-the-scenes support of the Rapids. The Rapids have been so great, and, and Tegan especially. They, um, if I need a practice facility, they, they get it to me. If, they, if I need a little bit of equipment, they give it to me. They help with marketing. They, they did the, the video. They made us uh, an amputee soccer logo for the Rapids. So um, they, they've been huge. It's, it's been so much fun, and it seems like they're really into it as well and, and excited about it as we are. So it's honestly been a super beneficial relationship between us and the Rapids. One of the players at the Denver scrimmage, Andrew Payne, is trying to organize his own amputee soccer club in Chicago. He's about a year behind the Colorado effort. He flew out to Denver for a little inspiration and to pick up a few pointers. So last year we had our first clinic, and we've been going fairly strong since then. We've got a small group of regular people that come out, and then you know every clinic it's a new handful of people who show up. So we're in the early stages, but we feel like we've made some momentum. I feel like in the last year especially, you can feel the momentum. I mean, like, now you hear it's like, oh, Colorado's going to start a team. And then it's like eight months later, they've got 10 guys, and you're like, holy cow. I think there's more interest. There's more visibility online. I think AASA's gotten sort of an, an infrastructure on how to grow a grassroots team. And so I think all those things have come together, and it's it feels like there's this critical mass, and it's starting to snowball, which is so exciting. People like Andrew Payne and Alex Miller are doing the heavy lifting and building up amputee soccer at the community level. But major league organizations like the Rapids can bring a level of visibility and professionalism that just isn't available anywhere else. Here's Javon Booker. The support of these MLS organizations is, is a major help because it also it gives visibility to our sport. The ability to have amputee soccer games be played in professional stadiums is really something that is a dream come true, I think, for a lot of us. Having this visibility and this support from professional organizations like the Rapids, like what the Revs have been doing in Massachusetts and, and how NYCFC has been supporting us in New York, we're, we're starting to see what the recipe is in order to be able to really develop regional teams all over the country. And, and we found that this is how we do it. We actually get out in the community and, and we get people playing amputee soccer. We've had people, even in the last 20 minutes, come by our booth and, and try it out and just realizing, wow, this is hard, but it also is just the same game, just a little bit different. Well, it all sounds great in theory. But would it actually work in practice? Would 15 Greenhorn amputee soccer players put on a compelling show for 12,000 MLS fans? Or would they do a collective face plant? I'll tell you how it turned out right after another shout-out to our Episode 3 sponsor, Proteor. For over 100 years, Proteor has been committed to being human first. Proteor is dedicated to improving the lives of individuals living with limb loss and limb differences. For more information, log on at us.proteor.com. That's us.proteor.com. Well, as the first half wound down between the Rapids and the Whitecap, Alex Miller and his amputee players changed out of their street clothes into MLS-branded uniforms, they headed down toward field level, doffed their prosthetic legs, and dumped them all in a pile. Then they slipped on their forearm crutches as the gun sounded, and it was showtime. Rabbits fans, stay in your seats and get ready to cheer during halftime for an amazing showcase of the Colorado Rapids MTT. It's a scrimmage on the north end. <laughs> Learn more about MTT soccer or to get involved, visit section 100. 
And off they went as the disco-ish soundtrack blared over the loudspeaker. A minute or so into the scrimmage, Javon Booker hit a goalpost, drawing a groan from the crowd. Steve Crawford made a nice defensive play to break up a scoring opportunity at the other end. Miriam Elizondo hustled back and forth at midfield and did not fall down. At roughly the three-minute mark, Nico Calabria brought it down the left wing and made a perfect crossing pass to place the ball right on Jordan Obernesser's foot. He gathered in the pass, planted his crutches, and fired a perfect 10-yarder into the back of the net. Here's the crowd's reaction. Another goal brought another appreciative roar and a mid-air chest bump between Calabria and Booker. There were a few more close calls. One scramble in front of the net left three or four players sprawled on the grass, but the defense cleared it. Time passed quickly, too quickly for the players on the pitch, and maybe too quickly for the crowd too, judging by their reaction at the end of the scrimmage. That's it for tonight's halftime match. Fans, let's give them all a big round of applause. And everybody hustled off the pitch as the Rapids and Whitecaps came out to start stretching before the second half. Before they slipped back into their prosthetic legs, everybody posed for pictures at the edge of the field. We pulled aside a few of the players while their experience was still fresh and asked them, how did it go? Great your performance. Oh man, probably an eight. <laughs> out of ten? Eight out of ten, yeah. yeah. It's definitely a, like I said, it's a different ball game when you're trying to run with crutches, trying to time everything, the kick the speed of the ball, everything. Oh, I don't know, six or seven. Uh, I don't know. It, uh, it goes by so fast, um, and it's you take in all the sights and the sounds, but I think what's cool is looking at the faces of the other guys, and you just see them lit up and so excited, and I can see like just hearing the just exuberance coming off guys, like it, it, it's so contagious. <laughs> I would rate my performance, I'd say, a solid seven and a half for myself. Everyone else, I give a hands down 11 out of 10. They crushed it. Uh, no, it, it was really good. I felt really great about the performance that everyone did. We got the crowd was super involved, really stoked to cheer us on. And uh, yeah, it was really cool to see everyone get so involved with the, the, our exhibition match. I wasn't expecting that much activity from the crowd, but they loved it. I feel like they like seeing uh, people falling and stuff too. So, you know, I think that was part of it. How many people came to the stadium tonight that had no idea what amputee soccer is? And now a few thousand people got to see a bunch of guys running around out there, giving it their all on crutches, and they're going to go home talking about it because it's memorable. Seeing guys trying to play soccer on crutches sticks out, and, and that's what we're trying to do, right? Get the word out. I promise you that someone here knows an amputee who had no idea about this, that this, this program existed, and someone here knows about a potential sponsor who might want to be a part of it. It's certainly a moment where the community sees it at center field and, and gets eyes on it in a legitimate way for the first time, which as far as growing the programs in different parts of the country is massive. And we didn't ask Tegan Maleka of the Rapids for a numerical rating when we talked to her about a week after the scrimmage, but she didn't leave any doubt about how this went from the club's perspective. I know the fans were loving it and I honestly haven't seen as many fans stay in their seats. So hearing those chants, hearing those yells of the crowd and Seeing the support and just knowing that that interaction has happened is so fulfilling and so amazing to see because it's really made an impact on not only the team, but the fans as well. It was one of the biggest hits of the year so far. I've gotten nothing but great feedback, so it was an amazing time all around. In fact, Malika told us the Rapids are already planning to do another halftime amputee soccer exhibition at a match in September. Alex Miller didn't give us a numerical rating either, but when we caught up with him a couple weeks ago, he was still fired up, and he said his players were too. I think they're still buzzing from it. They had so much fun getting out there and, and playing, and uh, I, I think the biggest surprise for them was how much they got the crowd into it. Everybody was commenting on that, smiles ear to ear from all the players. And then we just two days ago had um, an online meeting with the uh, regional leaders from around the country for the other teams. And that was a topic of how well the Colorado event went and how much people were talking about it. And seeing news coverage on it and everything it gets people a little more excited. 
We had one last question for Gabriel Gonzalez after the scrimmage. Now that he'd realized his dream of getting to play soccer in a major league stadium, what did he plan to do for an encore? How do you top this? <laughs> uh, probably having an actual playoff team of just amputees. Well, he might get his wish. Stay tuned for more information about that in a future episode. That does it for this episode of Amputee Soccer Rising. Final thank you to Proteor for sponsoring this episode. For over 100 years, Proteor has been improving the lives of individuals living with limb loss and limb different. Find them at us.proteor.com. For production support on this episode, thank you to Mindy Best. If you want to keep tabs on the Colorado Rapids' plans to stage another amputee soccer exhibition at a match in September, log on at their website at coloradorapids.com and click on the community page. If you want to know what's happening in your own community in terms of organizing a local amputee soccer team, or if you want to get that ball rolling yourself, visit the American Amputee Soccer Association at usampsoccer.org. And you can find Amplitude online at livingwithamplitude.com. Thanks for listening to Amputee Soccer Rising, a co-production of the American Amputee Soccer Association and Amplitude Magazine. Amplitude Magazine.